pleasure inviting him to uh, address on education for development men and women of character honorable ganesh ji is a founding member of manviya shikshan sansthan institute of humane education sanskar kanpur in 2000 this sansthan is working on humanistic education for universe human order he has worked on curriculum content and pedagogy to bring human values into formal education he is the co-author of the book on human values and professional ethics which is used widely with encouraging results for his exemplary contributions as a teacher social activist and thinker of humanistic and value based education uh, iit kanpur honored him uh, with satyendra ke dubey memorial award in 2006 and once again i would request as feeling honored and pleasure inviting ganesh bhagaria ji for the keynote address on education for developing men and women of character <coughs> welcome everybody let's talk about this education for developing men and women of character so few things which uh, i will speak out in the beginning is something which many of you who have been coming to this conference must have heard so i will be very b- brief about it and then take on to the other things <coughs> so when you talk about character there are few things to be ensured at the level of individual and there are few things which has to be ensured at the level of society right so at the level of individual we need transformation to human consciousness and at the level of society we need a transformation to human society and let's see what that really means <laughs> human beings living with human consciousness will live with human conduct which will ensure fulfillment within and it will become the basis for human society human society will in turn ensure the nurturing and protection of human conduct in every citizen of the society so to understand human character we have to start with understanding human consciousness and we'll now explore into this <coughs> so what we are saying is whatever we are saying here is a proposal take it as a proposal and verify it on your own right do not assume it to be true or false and one of the simplest way to verify it is to ask your natural acceptance so what is naturally acceptable to you is right for you and what is not naturally acceptable to you is not right for you so that is what we have been saying that every one of us is endowed with this conscience with this natural acceptance we only have to start referring to it so that is the basis on which we will decide what is right for us and what is not right for us it is a process of dialogue a dialogue which will begin between me and you but then it will soon soon become a dialogue within your own self so the question that i am asking to you you will start asking those question to your own self and that is the meaning of dialogue within yourself and in that sense this dialogue will be begin here but it will continue with you it in of your life and you can see what is the implication of it so simple questions is human relationship important yes no yes very simple <coughs> what do we all want we can examine this within ourselves three things happiness prosperity and its continuity do we want all do we all want this all three yes happiness prosperity and its continuity but if you look at our state of being are we happy are we prosperous is there continuity of our happiness and prosperity so there is an affirmative yes here but not so much affirmative yes here so that is the difference between what we want and what we are right a more fundamental question to ask is that is our effort for continuity of happiness and prosperity or just for accumulation of physical facility all that effort we are making at the level of individual at the level of society is it for ensuring continuity of happiness or is it just for accumulation of physical facility okay 
have you assumed that happiness and prosperity will be ensured when you have enough physical facility no, no. <coughs> then what effort are you making for continuity of happiness and prosperity other than accumulation of physical facility yeah so all these questions we have to ask to ourselves right if you ask this question to yourself you can see that unhappiness in your family is it more due to lack of physical facility or due to lack of fulfillment in relationship fulfillment of relationship how much time and effort are you investing for physical facility and for fulfillment in relationship yeah so you can see whether you are making the right investment or not <coughs> of your time and efforts so what we are saying is that unhappiness is in more, is more due to lack of fulfillment in relationship most of the time and effort is spent for physical facility is that true yes but we want to make a still simpler conclusion and the simple conclusion is this that being physical facility is necessary but relationship is also necessary is that correct <coughs> yes yeah very simple very straight forward <coughs> on examining carefully we find that this is a fundamental difference between animals and human being the fundamental difference between human being and the animal is that physical facility is necessary for animals and necessary for human being also but for animals physical facility is necessary as well as adequate that is physical facility may suffice for the fulfillment of animals but physical facility alone is not going to suffice for human being for human being <coughs> if you have this <coughs> lack of physical facility if the animals have lack of physical facility it becomes uncomfortable when it gets physical facility it becomes comfortable for example when a cow gets stomach full of grass it becomes comfortable sits and chews the cud you must have seen the cow right doing this what about you when a human being has lack of physical facility he becomes uncomfortable and unhappy but once he gets the physical facility gets about it and he starts thinking about 100 other things do you do that yes <coughs> check for yourself if you feel happy every day that you are getting enough to eat if you don't get you are unhappy and comfortable if you get you forget about it right so essentially this is what we are trying to say that for animals this might suffice for human beings this alone will not suffice this is important this is required but this is also required so physical facility with rest of nature is required relationship with human being is also required and both of them are required both of them are important for human being right <coughs> does it make sense okay if you look at human being we all have this desire to live with you know in relationship with other human beings right and we want to live you know and feel happy when we are living in relationship with others therefore relationship is necessary for human being you ask yourself what is naturally acceptable to you to live in relationship with others or to live in opposition with others others or you believe that living has to be necessary in opposition with others that is there is struggle for survival and survival of the fittest and check if you feel happy living this way which of the three choices is naturally acceptable to you one two or three first one, one. first one very simple and what we are teaching to the students third one <laughs> yes So again the simple conclusion is that for human being both physical facility and relationship are necessary 
So, this is one important conclusion. On further examination, we find that we all do want to live in relationship with others. Every night when there is a fight, we want to resolve it. We start the next day with the thought that we do not want to fight today. But due to lack of right understanding about fulfillment of relationship, a fight takes place by night. Right? Does this happen in your family, with your friends, with your colleagues, in the office? Right? So, for fulfillment in relationship, it is necessary to have right understanding about relationship. That is, right understanding is also necessary for human being. So, now three things are important. One is right understanding in the self, second is relationship with human being, and third is physical facility with rest of nature. Now, you can see whether all three of them are required for you or you can do away with any one of them. all three are required. Good. Are we taking care of all three of them? Or we are largely focusing here? So, this is one important conclusion. The second question is, <coughs> if all three are required, what is the priority? <coughs> if all three are required, what is going to be the priority? Right understanding is the first priority. Good. Next. <coughs> Next is relationship. So, that is how this priority looks like. Right understanding is the first priority, relationship is the second priority, physical facility is the third priority. And now you can see what we are doing. We are not taking care of the first priority, we are not taking care of the second priority, and we are engaging ourselves day and night for the third priority. And now, if we realize this, we can see what is going to be the implications. What is going to be the implication when we take care of all three and the implication when we take care of only this, ignoring these two. <coughs> so, if you look at that, if you are only focusing on physical facility, this is the outcome. When we do not have the right understanding, we are not able to ensure the fulfillment in relationship. As a result, we are unhappy within and we are making others unhappy. I keep asking, you know, particularly the mothers, when do you shout at the child? When you are comfortable within or uncomfortable within? Uncomfortable. uncomfortable within. So, if you are uncomfortable within, you will make your child unhappy. Right? So, that is what we are doing. Second thing is that if we do not have the right understanding, we do not know how much physical facility is required. And if we do not know how much physical facility is required, then in regard of how much we accumulate, right, we always feel deprived. So, if, even we, you know, if we accumulate something of the order of 10 lakhs crores, right, we do not feel that it is enough, because we have not been able to identify the need of physical facility because of lack of right understanding and therefore you feel deprived if you feel deprived will you think of exploiting others or nurturing others exploiting others so exploiting and depriving others so that is where we are that with the kind of priority that we have today that is only priority is the physical facility undermining this as well as this we end up feeling unhappy within, making others unhappy. We end up having the feeling of deprivation and depriving others. On the other hand, <coughs> if we have all these three, right understanding in the self, the fulfillment in relationship with human being and physical facility with rest of nature, then with right understanding we are able to ensure fulfillment in relationship, which leads to mutual happiness, my happiness as well as the happiness of the other. Similarly, if you have the right understanding, I now know how much physical facility is required for me and if I can ensure more than what is required, then I will have a feeling of prosperity within and if I have the feeling of prosperity, I think of nurturing others, right. So, I become a source of prosperity for others. So, with these three, I can be in a state of happiness and prosperity within 
and work for happiness and prosperity of others. And that is what we all desire as a human being. So as a conclusion, what we are saying that if we are living like this, that is what we find today, right? With that priority of just physical facility. So we have people who are lacking physical facility, unhappy and deprived. And we have people having physical facility, unhappy and deprived. And you can find out where you are, right? One or two. What do you think? You are in <coughs> one or two? Number two. Number two. While we want to be in number three, people having physical facility, happy and prosperous. So we can all find out where we are in one, two or three, where do we want to be, right? But with the kind of priority that we have set for physical facility alone, we end up either being here or being here. But with right understanding, right you know, relationship and physical facility, we will be able to ensure this. So as a conclusion what we are saying is that if we are, our living is only for physical facility then we are living with animal consciousness because animals live only for physical facility and are fulfilled by that not human being. So this is one important conclusion. This is what we are calling as living with animal consciousness. So this is what you know, is the state of being. On the other hand, <coughs> if we are living with definite I will come back to this if time permits. On the other hand, if you are taking care of all three, then we will have state of happiness and prosperity within and we will work for happiness and prosperity of others and that is living with human consciousness. So when we were saying that we need that transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness, what we are essentially trying to say is this, this transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness. So this is one transformation that is required for all of us at the individual level. So this is one part of what we wanted to share. Okay. So let us see this transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness is what is desirable at the individual level. If there is any pertinent question, immediate question, I can respond. Otherwise, I will take to the second part that is transformation at the level of society. Okay. I think I will continue and then I will open up for question after this. <coughs> so if this is what we have caring for all three, it will essentially mean understanding the harmony at all these levels, the human being, the family, the society, the nature, the existence and then living in harmony at all these four levels. As we go ahead, we will try to unfold this, you know, in more details in other keynote addresses as well as in other discussions. So, I am not going to go into the details. But an outcome of this would like look like this. Having right understanding in this self, justice in relationship with human being from family to world family leading to an undivided society, of course mutual happiness. And then participation in the larger order with entire nature from family order to world family order leading to fulfillment of human goal and the universal human order. This is the kind of overall picture that you know is being talked about. So on the basis of human consciousness such a possibility is there. This also will try to unfold as we go on. With this background, if you look at the society, at the level of society we would like to ensure these four human goals to be fulfilled. <coughs> that is right understanding and right feeling leading to happiness in every individual, prosperity in every family, fearlessness, trust in society, the coexistence, mutual fulfillment in nature in existence. 
What do you think? All these are desirable? And if you look at what we have today, this is how it looks like. We have assumptions instead of right understanding and right feeling and one of such assumptions is money is everything. We have accumulation by any means instead of prosperity we are working for accumulation and this seems to be possible not for all. So, we say ok at least for few individuals there should be accumulation. In the name of trust or you know fearlessness we have now domination, exploitation and fear in the society. And instead of over you know mutual fulfillment with rest of nature we are trying to mastery over the nature and exploit the nature. And if we have all this, this is what it leads to obsession for consumption, <coughs> profit and sensual pleasure. It leads to terrain war at the level of society. It leads to resource depletion and pollution at the level of nature. So, what do you think? Are we here or are we here? And what is the desirable? This is desirable, we are there. So, this is desirable and we are here. So, basically if you look at this transformation at the level of society, we have to have a society which is not working for this, but working for this. So, if you combine the two, this transformation at the level of individual and transformation at the level of society, this is how it would look like. So, this is the kind of transformation that we are you know working for. So, transformation at the level of individual and transformation at the level of society. If both this is ensured, then we will have people with human conduct, with human character. Right. So, this is the basic requirement. And then we are saying that in order to do this, what we need is human education, which is human consciousness, which will lead to understanding of human values which will ultimately lead to human conduct and human character that in turn will lead to human society and such a human society will provide a human education and that is how things can go on you know in <coughs> continuity in tradition. So, this is what we are trying to work on and in the light of this if you now see this there are three parts of it. One is realization of this harmony, harmony at all levels starting from the individual to family to society to nature and ultimately the existence. On the light of understanding the realization of this harmony, we have to have the feeling and thought of living in harmony and that is what we are identifying as human values. And in light of these human values, we will have this human character that is expressing it in the society in terms of our behavior in terms of our work, in terms of our participation. So, behavior with human being leading to justice in relationship, leading to mutual fulfillment and if you expand it from family to world family, it leads to undivided society. Similarly, work with rest of nature leading to mutual enrichment, right. it will be product producing more than what is required. Right at the same time ensuring the preservation of rest of nature. Then third is participation in the larger order that is with the entire or nature which will lead to fulfillment of human goal and we expand this from family, family order to world family order, it will lead to universal human order. This is what essentially you know this is the kind of transformation that is required for in order to ensure human character right. and once we have the human character we can become the source of human society and if we have the human society the human society can nurture the human education the human consciousness the human values and ultimately the human character so that is what we need to do right. this is the broad picture <coughs> i have broadly introduced this you know in keynote 1, Q 
Keynote 2 will take up the details about this aspect of relationship and how it appears in terms of our living together in the family, in the workplace, with our friends and with the society at large. Keynote 3 will try to understand how the society would look like you know, and how we can work for such a society. So that is a very broad you know, introduction of what I wanted to just bring to your notice. I think I will throw open for question. <coughs> if there was time I would have expanded little more, but I thought I will at least introduce these concepts. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, so this is a question or a suggestion? <laughs> okay, if it is a question, let me respond first. See, what we did in the last session, it was quite apparent that all these people, we call them as great people, right, have been essentially trying to seek the truth, understand the reality, understand the existence, understand the human <coughs> being, understand the role of human being in this existence. And they have been trying to find out how the human being can live in this existence meaningfully, in a fulfilling manner. So that has been the concern of everybody and that is what I said that we are not claiming any, you know, kind of credit or originality. Our effort is to understand what has been unfolded, you know, about the existence, about the human being, about the role of human being from time immemorial to this date, right and understand it, try to live with it and make it part of mainstream education. So you will find these things everywhere, you know, in Buddhism or in what somebody was talking about Sikhism, about Islam, about Vedic traditions, right. Everywhere the effort is for this, right. We have to understand it but the important thing is that we have to understand. Important thing is that we have to live up to it. Right? And then we have to pass, into the, pass it on to the next generation. <coughs> These three things have to be done. Right? Whether you do it by the name of Buddha or you do it by name of Mahabir or by name of some other you know, person, the issue is basically this, that can I understand the existential reality, can I understand the human existence, number one. Number two, on the basis of this understanding, can I live a fulfilling life for myself? Right? and life which is fulfilling for others. And number three, can I pass it, in, pass it on to the next generation through a process of education, whether it is at home or in the society or in the colleges, the schools, right. That is the main issue, I mean, I think. And that is what we are trying to address too. And it was beautiful, this last session that we had, right. We have been talking about so much of differences that we are not talking about the commonness. And if we can talk about that commonness and at least achieve that commonness part, right, the world will be much better. Yeah, it will be much better. And that should become a part of education, part of mainstream education. And the effort that we have made is very small, I would say. Right? Because major part of what we have tried doing is limited to the, you know, technical education. Right? And that itself is showing so much of result. But as somebody was suggesting and every time people are suggesting this, that it has to start from the womb of the mother. If you do that, it will be much more effective. If you can do it in primary education, secondary education, it will be much more effective. Right? If you bring it to every aspect of society, it will be far more effective. 
so what we have done is just a humble beginning long way we have to go but good thing is that it can be done you know that's the kind of confidence that we are getting and what dasho was telling you know it can become a movement you know it can become very natural unfolding of what is you know there as a potential in every human being but we have to do it I I would agree agree with you that if you are not able to survive even like an animal then physical facility is the first priority but if you are able to survive like an animal then for human being the priority changes and interestingly if you look at this you know this is interesting this two slides you know this one says this is a book called how the other half dies written by susan george and it says by the time you finish reading this book approximately 6 hours it will take 400 people would have died of hunger or diseases caused by hunger very old book in fact can popular opinion malnutrition and starvation are not the result of overpopulation of over climate or lack of cultivable land the other half is dying because the first half is not <coughs> rightly utilizing the resources to give you an idea the amount of food that we are producing is six times what is required for all the people on earth we need 7.7 billion ton of food for all the people on earth we are already producing 4.2 billion ton six times if that is the case what do you think is it an issue of production or issue of right utilization right utilization 
then this is a issue of production or the issue of distribution? <coughs> distribution. The issue of distribution is a question of relationship. Isn't it? Yeah. An issue of relationship is an issue of understanding. In fact, the data says that if you are eating 1 kg of meat, right, at least the meat industries, they are investing 14 to 16 kg of grain to produce 1 kg of meat. Even more. Okay. So, it seems that the amount of grain that is fed to the animals in meat industries can feed around 8.7, 8.9 billion people and we only have 7 billion people. Same goes for the water consumption also. Eh? Same goes for the water consumption also. Yeah. Same <laughs> goes for the water consumption by an animal for 1 kg of meat. So, we have enough in terms of production, but the problem is with distribution, which is the problem of relationship, which is the problem of understanding. But true, I mean, at least food must be available to everyone. In India, we are producing around three times what is required for all the people <coughs> in India. And that does not take into account many things which are produced and not taken into account by the government. will solve the problem to some extent. Yeah, true. Six times yes. enough is produced, enough is produced. Even for a person who is in jeopardy, who is in jeopardy, the right understanding would tell him that he has to fill up his stomach first and then have relationships. And they do not create that human cry. It is empty stomach. Yeah, yeah. Interesting in India now, if you come under below poverty line BPL, you are given 35 kg of wheat or <laughs> rice for 1 rupees or 2 rupees a kg. And if you work for one day, the minimum wage is 1 rupee, 170 rupees. So, if you, if you work one day, you get enough food for the whole month. Sir, physical facility means only food? <coughs> physical facility means what is required for nurturing of the body, protection of the body and right utilization of the body. Three things. For, uh, for nurturing the body, you need food, you need you know clean air, clean water and all these things, right? You need shelter. Yeah, for protection of the body, you need shelter, you need clothes. And for right utilization of the body, whatever work you want to take from the body to make it effective, you may need some instruments, some equipments, some gadgets like that. All that to put together is what is required as physical facility. And that we can identify. That we can identify. Simple things like mobile. How many mobiles do you need in a family? And how many mobiles you have today? Find out. How many of pairs of clothes you have? Let's see, how many of you know how many pairs of clothes you have? One. Every time I ask, not more than 10% people would respond. So, you have so much of clothes, you do not know even how many of you are, you know, you have. I think they know how many almirals of clothes they have. <laughs> <laughs> that they may know. <laughs> Very interesting. In fact, if you have uh, a cloth which is old and you want to give it to, away to someone, today it is very difficult to find that someone. <laughs> yes. So I had a question. Actually, this is well established or that living in harmony is very good, really. But this harmonic phase, whatever I had the experience, remains for a shorter time. 
Suppose we actually participate or after this activity for one month or two months, it is remain there. And after that, slowly or gradually, it is actually we are coming, uh, reaching in the older phase. Uh, what is the problem here? <laughs> See, the problem is very simple. <coughs> problem is that you are given a kind of education for 40 years, 50 years, right? Which tells you that physical facility is the, the priority. Now you are used to that, you know, the whole thing is organized around you in that manner. And that is why you are in so much of hurry all the time. Because you do not know how much you require, so you have to go on accumulating. If you have to go on accumulating, you need speed. You have to be fast, you know. And because you don't know how much, so there is no end to it. So you have to run and run and run. And that is what we are doing. Right? See, people with 10 lakh crore worth of asset, they are not able to live together as brothers, right? They don't have time because they have to earn more. So that is how we are stuck. The whole system has become like that. Now at that point of time, now suddenly we are saying, you know, that we have to understand life and we have to understand harmony and, you know, we have to live with it. It appeals to you, you know, deep within that natural acceptance says that yes, it is worth. But the whole preconditioning that we have around us, right? It's just the other way. So it takes little time for you to work through. Right? How much time? <laughs> yeah. I, I personally feel around, you know, a reasonable time would be a period of 10 years. Actually, this is not the problem of earning, sir. Actually, what has happened in, in, in relations also, in offices or colleges also, uh, sometimes we remain in the uh, good phase harmonic phase with the colleagues or with the, uh, you can say, the subordinates or something like that. But suddenly what happens, we burst out and the whole, you can say, harmony goes actually whatever we accumulate in last two, three months. So, well, yeah. how actually we so, get the problem? Right understanding period. problem is there. The sudden problem, sudden uh, incident actually, that's why all the last efforts. Yeah, so I, I will respond to this question of time, you know. I mean, my own experience I will tell that <coughs> certain things get sorted out immediately, you know. Certain things come by flash and I am able to see that, yes, this is the way it is. So I am able to sort them out. Certain things I am not able to see as clearly. So that takes time. So if you ask me, I would say that certain, in, you know, uh, kind of Results you will be able to see immediately, right? Certain things may take time and you must give a reasonable time of let's say 10 years, you know, because already we have spent 40 years, 50 years, you know, doing other things and so much of preconditioning is there. So to be able to be aware of that preconditioning and to be able to evaluate them, you know, and get rid of them and get to this right understanding, a period of 10 years is a reasonable time. But in the meantime, it is not that nothing will happen lot of things will happen, lot of changes will take place, but <coughs> will it be complete? I would say no, you know, that will take time, but the impacts will be visible, visible, okay. And you have to work on it, you know, you have to keep working on it, at least I keep working on it, that is my own experience, that there are very fine subtle preconditioning which are seated in me and which I am not aware of. So I have to continually work on them and similarly I, mean, I have to keep working, understanding what is this harmony and how I can live up to it. To me it has already taken 20 years right. and I am still working on it. <coughs> can I make a comment here? Yes. I think we are here um, mindfulness, awareness, understanding the reality of the present moment is the key. 
perhaps what we need to, you know, what, what is lacking is we don't pay attention to our own experiences, right? We are bound, because we rely so much on our, um, you know, sensations which are outward bound. And uh, we are so, you know, masters in looking outside. But if you really look in within, turn inward, and pay little attention, for example, when we are talking about harmony and then harmony going, uh, you know, wrong, then what we need to look at, look at it is that, for example, when we shout at somebody, what is important is at that given point of time, if you pay little attention when you are shouting at your colleague or your spouse or, or your subordinate, what is your experience? Because experience is within. It's always within, you know, feeling of happiness, feeling of exuberance, feeling of unhappiness. These are experiences within. So if we are able to invest a little bit of attention and focus into our experience, we'll definitely see when harmony is, you know, compromised. You are troubled. <laughs> that is what we need to pay attention. That when you are angry, when you are upset, look into your state of being. Are we comfortable? Are we, <coughs> are we in our natural state of mind? This is lacking, total lacking. We, we, we never pay attention to our own experiences, our own thoughts, our own emotions. Rather, we are busy trying to see how we can fix the outside world, how we can fix the other person who has been a trigger in getting yourself, you know, unhappy or, uh, or getting angry. <coughs> So this is one thing, you know, if you really want to, you know, make a progress in life uh, and work with harmony, it's very important that we invest a little bit of energy and effort looking into our own emotions, looking into our own thoughts. This is one. Number two, when we are talking about, you know, the, 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 the content of modern education is all about success. It's all about being the first, you know, the early bird. You have you have to be, you know, first. That is what has been created into our you know, psyche. But what we need to understand is, whatever you talk about luxury and comfort, physical things that, that you get out of physical things is just a question of comfort and convenience. It's just a question of comfort and convenience. Talk about a car, talk about a mobile phone, it's about convenience. We need this piece of technology. Without this mic, I really have to, you know, shout at the pitch, you know, high pitch of my voice, which will take so much of my energy. But I'm using this, uh, you know, magical instrument, this technology, that I can speak normally and get, with, you know, to, to hundreds of people here without investing any additional sort of thing. So what we need to understand is that the quality of life, the quality of life is not determined by what car you have parked outside your residence or in what kind of house you live. This, is, this will never determine the quality of life. Quality of life is determined by how happily you drive your Maruti 800 or how happily you drive your, you know, ride your motorbike. Only when you happy within, the world makes a meaning. If you are happy to enjoy a cup of coffee, what is the fundamental requirement? Even to enjoy a cup of coffee, cup of tea, or your best uh, dishes, whatever. Rasgulla or gulab jamun, whatever. The fundamental requirement, one requirement to enjoy that is peace of mind, happiness within. Then only you'll get the taste of that thing if you are disturbed from within, if you are not in your natural state of mind, serve you the best meal that you <coughs> want, still it will, you will not enjoy. So happiness, well-being, is a fundamental requirement. It's not the ultimate goal. It's in the process, not at the end. So this is what we need to understand, that quality of life is not determined by how much bank balance you have, but how happily and exuberantly you live your life with whatever you have. That determines the quality. If we are clear this much, I think half of our problems is solved. True. <coughs>
in fact this world outside and the world inside the world outside is important but the world inside is also important and what uh, uh, Lopin Lumten is saying that we are paying too much of attention to world outside but we are paying very little attention to world inside and this happiness and unhappiness is there you know at the level of self at the level of world inside and throughout our education and we are spending almost 50 to 20 years of our you know uh, very prime life time in education and we are not even addressed you know that there is something like inside and something like outside and we need to address both of them we are not even you know made aware of that leave alone giving the details and you know how to handle it so if we do that i think this 15 to 20 years of our education time is a very valuable time and it can all be done during that period Sir, sir, yeah, there is one question from there, then I will come back to you. Sir, in higher education, we uh, deal with the youth who are in the age group of 16 to 24 years or maybe slightly higher. And uh, they come with some preconceived notion when they come to us. So, before we try to make them understand the right uh, understanding, they need to do some unlearning also. So, can we take this program? at the level of school teacher and parents simultaneously so that uh, it could get ascend up and we get uh, say better results. Yes, we should do that. <coughs> Only thing uh, that we were thinking is that to have people who will do it. And we thought that we will get them in higher education. That is one <laughs> reason. <laughs> Second is that these people in higher education they are going to go to the society and contribute in a positive or negative manner. So, something has to be done to them. Third, they are the one who are going to become the parents soon. So, at least they should have something to pass on to their next generation. Right? So, thinking, I will just complete. So, thinking all that we thought that let us start in technical <laughs> education and one major reason was that we were all from technical education. So, that was the area which was quite easily accessible. <laughs> to us but certainly you know it should go to primary and secondary education and there are quite a few efforts being made on in that direction but we should do that we should do that particularly there are many colleges who also have these schools you know associated with them so such colleges should take this you know initiative see some places we have to do it in a very proper manner like we did it in triple IIT which uh, Dr. Sinde was mentioning that it was done in triple IIT very small you know with 180 students per year it was done for four years and it started showing up some you know significant uh, kind of result and that is how it was then multiplied in UP Technical University and so on we should do this do this primary education at least in few schools few you know kind of higher secondary schools then things can pick up can I, can I share my experience with you that I fully agree with that we should have human values from values to But higher education level it has taken off. The reason is that we today higher education is <coughs> governed by the autonomous institution or the university by chancellors for autonomous. They can take a decision. I could have taken a decision whether I saw the university. After attending the first international conference at I, uh, I tried with government police. My university I could do government, I was a member of the police and primary education authority. But what I found, when I get the idea, is all the police are going to the today, primary education is governed by the brokers. Higher education governs the brokers. And not higher is even that uh, government, government is going to college part. So university level, it is easy. Government level is not easy. Neither the politicians or the bosses, they are convinced about this, they can be poor, they can stand. They are interested. And the bureaucrats are seeking to control, they are also not interested. Unfortunately, what happened to me is that the director of the Minister was a professor earlier. Now, IAS officer was taken over. That's what they told me. Unfortunately, my own experience in India and the other says, the bureaucrats are hard not to correct, they are not allowed to do anything. They don't want to change the system because they have a vested interest. Once you do this, their interest will happen. That's the crux of it. 
माय Okay, I mean, I will come back to this question, but I uh, will respond to your question first. Are you shouting outside or shouting inside also? That is the important question, right. So if you are disturbed inside, it is not good for you and for others. That should be very clear, right. If you are comfortable inside and you want to draw attention of somebody else and therefore you are speaking in a loud voice. Right? That might be necessary sometime. But at that point of time you must ask yourself, you know what you are saying, looking inside, are you disturbed inside or are you comfortable inside? That is important. You have to be comfortable inside, then only you can do something constructive outside. If you are shouting outside and you are disturbed inside, it is going to damage you and damage the other, damage your relationship. So that you have to take care. Sometimes you might have to speak, you know, very loud, you know, and kind of to draw the attention of the other person, you know. He is almost just like an animal then, you know, you have to uh, kind of shout. But are you inside also disturbed? If yes, then it is not good. If you are not disturbed inside, then it may be useful, effective you know, to draw the attention of the other. It means you are convinced that you need to shout now. That is what I am saying, that if somebody is too much, you know, diverted, you know, absorbed somewhere else, to draw your attention, you may speak in a loud voice. I think it can be used as a measure. Yeah, like it is one of the language, you know, I would say. But when you are using a language, what is your condition of the self? What are you inside? Are you comfortable, uncomfortable? That is important, I would say. Yeah, for example, I am using this word animal consciousness, right. Many times people have said that why are you using this word animal consciousness, you know it is very hurting, right. My intention is not to hurt anybody, right. But to use a word which draws your attention towards the fact that we are doing just what animals, you know, are supposed to do and only animals can feel satisfied with it. So we need to do something more and what is more is what we need to understand. So this can look very harsh. So many times people have suggested that call it inhuman consciousness rather than calling animal consciousness. So that is a harsh word I would say. But I continue to use it just to draw the attention you know and draw the contrast. Can you give an example where shouting is required? No, I am saying this, using this word animal consciousness is a harsh word, you know. It is like shouting, you know. It is like shouting and telling people that you are living like animal. Shouting will be gentle. No, this is what I am saying now. Shouting is not required at all under any circumstances. How and why? There are two aspects to it. <coughs> Firstly, you know, either you are reacting or you are responding. 
you have uh, acted in hurry. That's the reason you have shouted upon somebody. Second issue is you don't take him to be your own. Your servant has broken something, you are shouting upon him. The moment he says that your child has broken it, your attitude changes all of a Here I disagree. We shout only because he considers that he or she is our. So the shout part of shouting as far as. Yeah, what Dr. Charan is, Charan is saying is quite different. He is saying that we shout on someone whom we consider ours, you know, or feel related to. But see, my point is very simple. You look at yourself, are you comfortable within? Okay, then continue to shout, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will just uh, respond to this uh, question that uh, Dr. Singh was asking and uh, my Professor uh, Vinayak Rathji was responding. Incidentally, Professor Vinayak Rathji is one of my teachers in IIT Kanpur, so I am his student. Uh, see, what I have found with the government officials also is that they are all willing to do something constructive, right? But we are lacking people who can do it. So they can't do it, but they are willing to support anybody who wants to do something good. Okay. We don't have enough people who can pursue. So if we, some of you show up interest and say that okay, we will work in you know, primary education and secondary education, there is enough opportunity. Sir, my submission is you should start with the primary school the teacher's training program. I, I still am pursuing yeah. the teacher's training. All those details have to be worked out. Yeah, already there is some effort made by Chhattisgarh government. There is some intensive effort going on in government. All those, yeah, things are in the process. Sir, I think it should also be for parents. It should be for parents also. Those who are saying, yes, yes. This higher education is for parents. We are replacing knowledge with physical facility automatically. Yeah. Yes, Parenting of parents. Parenting of parents. Good, very nice. I have taken too much of time. Yeah, I will take this last question. We will anyway continue. All these three days it will continue and many more days as Dasha was saying that now you can't opt out, you know, you are into it and that is it. Okay, so. When I came across uh, with this education 10 years back, I got the goal of my life. When I got the goal of life, I always try to walk towards the goal. I kept on observing my thoughts at times, 14 hours, 15 hours a day. What I am thinking, why I am thinking so and so on. I, I used to do mistakes, as, uh, earlier I used to. I do used to call uh, students, my children, even with, with wives. Every time I do that, I think it. Uh, can I do it uh, some other way, which makes me as well as her or him happy? So every time I improved upon, I improved upon, and every time I felt more happier in life. And uh, now the situation is, I'm in more harmony at home, at workplace, and uh, they are more happy. They are more happy. My children, now they are idealizing me. They are voting. They are... Uh, so, uh, over the period of time, if you are... My uh, papa was saying this, if you keep on working on us, every step we climb on, that is an achievement in life. You know, we may not get to 100%, but if you are able to get 80%, 90% of it, we are excellent, isn't it? Same goes in the academics as well. So we are at 50 or 40, scoring 40 or 50 in life. Now we are scoring 85, 90. That's good. That's an achievement. That is how I am motivating myself for working for this. Thank you. I may have to. Excuse me, I just want to add to it. If you introspect within uh, yourself for five minutes a day, once you go before sleeping, you uh, one need to just uh, take out five minutes of this whole, whole day's time and find out what went better and what went wrong. 
And if you see it, the better the uh, had a quarrel or argument with some person, was it needed or it was not needed? And uh, why this happened? And if you introspect, if you have to write, write down, yes, this thing I may have avoided it, then definitely next day your conduct would be differently, totally different. So I'm gradually, this process is, a, is a, not a single day or a 15 days or a one month program. It's a slow, slow process. And if you continue it, definitely what is the gentleman has told, there would be improvement in your life. And the uh, improvement comes from yourself, then your family life, your spouse, your children, they will appreciate your uh, whatever the thought process that is going on, what is the, you are doing it. And finally, it goes to the workplace. So if, uh, this small process of getting <coughs> five minutes a day, if everyone starts, then definitely change will be there. Yeah. I had started in my college and I asked my all the students, yes, before going to the sleep, just have introspect for a day, for a five minutes, and find it out what can I change. And the, the things start changing. That is the yeah. I'll, I'll the just thing. add one thing. thing. Why we are having this conference and we are trying to yeah, so I would agree that at least for five minutes you should, but it will be better if you can do every moment. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Agreed. Agreed, agreed, agreed. From tonight, we should start at least five minutes. Yes, sir. Can I say something? In uh, management, you I have a concept called, in, in case of conflict, you have a concept called fight or flight. Okay, as the gentleman has pointed out, yes, you fight it out. End of the day, it doesn't work out without losing the cool. You say, you adopt an approach called, you are right. Leave it at that. Then take a flight in the sense you remain quiet. <coughs> Situation will improve upon the very next day. It doesn't last years. This is one concept one can follow that immediately before you lose your cool, you say, you stop the discussion and arguments further by saying you are right. Leave it. By saying you are right, it doesn't mean that you are wrong. You are only, you know, uh, evading the situation for the time being. If it doesn't work out, remain silent for a few minutes. The situation will get back to normal, maybe next month. That's my uh, practical suggestion. Can I contribute Good. Something? So, unless something very important is left, <laughs> we'll close. <laughs> yes. With your comment, we'll close. Sir, when I was still learning, I was thinking about Baruji's skin, and I was thinking about it. Good thing, look. Actually, my question was that I wanted to ask this question, that with all the activities, is there any meditation or yoga, any of these types of activities, will we improve more and more? This is some sort of thing. Actually, I have a question on that issue. ठीक है उस पर कभी डिटेल बात करेंगे आपसे Around the clock. You don't have to wait for 10 days to set, uh, let the thing settle down and then see the results. No. I would say as long as you are watching yourself, your soul is telling you what you have done. Have you hurt the man wrongly? Because as a human being, that's uncertain in case you are shouting upon him in front of others. Maybe if you are talking to him one to one, he may not feel insulted. And the impression what you leave on the other person by hurting his feelings is quite dangerous. You should not allow it to linger on. You should try to settle it down. 
in army what we used to do in, in case we have un, uh, uh, you know uh, shouted upon someone at the heat in the heat of the woman we invite the body for a for a for a change in the you know in the consciousness and send it up to the yes now I, i must be permitted to close thank you